bulletin, or you can find it on page 365 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. We begin with the acclamation, and I want to hear you say this boldly. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Let us pray. Blessed Lord has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Be seated. A reading from the letter of Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtains, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord.
and many others. They are very close to real. The great ones, that is. Because these characters are, like real people, thoroughly human. They are fallible and they are glorious. They are weak and they are strong. At times they act badly and at other times they act nobly. And in the best novels and plays and films, the main characters are neither wholly good or wholly bad, paper cut out heroines and villains. There are some ones like that, but not most. Like us, most of them are both saints and sinners, doing the best they can. Neither they or their lives or our lives stay the same. Life changes and life changes us. Yet, as we hear in the burial service in the Book of Common Prayer, for to your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place, eternal, in the heavens. It is with this assurance that we are human, saints and sinners all, and that life in all its riches changes and changes us, but doesn't truly end, that we prepare for Advent, we begin preparing for Advent this week and the next, when we hear of the end times, the end of life as we know it. The writer to the Hebrews this morning tells us that as the day approaches, whether the end of our lives or the end of the world, that we continue to live, and to live not only for ourselves, but for others. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to gather together, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. In the gospel, the disciples feel awe when they see the temple because of its large stones and buildings. This is the second temple, built by Herod the Great around 515 BCE and destroyed by the Romans in 70 CE. It was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The entrance plaza before it was as large as six modern football fields. Herod needed to find space for the visitors who came to Jerusalem from all around the ancient Near East and Southern Europe to celebrate the Jewish festivals including Passover and Pentecost, which would sometimes quintuple the population of the city. So Herod enclosed the entire top of Mount Moriah with enormous retaining walls and filled in the entire space. Some of these stones remain today part of a wall five meters thick, which today is known as the Wailing Wall. The stones weigh between two tons and 100 tons, but one gigantic stone weighs an estimated 400 tons. The temple took many, many years to build, employing 10,000 workers and craftsmen, along with the 1,500 priests, who were the only ones permitted to work inside the innermost and holiest parts of the temple. So if you can just imagine the size of those stones, and the height and the size of the temple and its complex, we can understand why the disciples were in such awe. But Jesus understood something else. Anything human persons make, whether buildings or cultures or governments, do not last forever. Do you see these great buildings, Jesus asks, and then says, not one stone will be left here upon another all will be thrown down. And indeed, when the Romans destroyed this ancient wonder, they did a thorough job. None of the inner buildings were made, only the retaining wall. And we're just beginning to discover with archeologists some of the chambers below, which are still somewhat intact. Was Jesus, as the Son of God, the Messiah, predicting the destruction of the temple? that happened 40 years after his death and resurrection? Or was he a prophet who could read the signs of the times? Either way, he knew about impermanence. 
And he warned his disciples not to be led astray by anyone who said they could predict, for example, the end of the world. Since the time of Jesus, many false prophets have said they could. But God only knows the day or the hour, Jesus said. So if you go back to the letter to the Hebrews, the writer is responding to the absence of a physical temple. Jesus is the new high priest. The body of Jesus is the temple. Instead of entering the holiest of holies at the heart of the ancient temple, through the thick curtain that once was there, we now enter the kingdom of God through Jesus himself, through faith in his life and teaching, his death and resurrection. The anonymous author of Hebrews urges us to believe in a hopeful end if we live life faithfully and well. He urges us to gather on a regular basis, to love each other, and to encourage each other in doing good. This is why we are here, right now, in this place. The faith that we hold in our hearts and the good that we do for each other, for our families, neighbors, and strangers, however large or small, is part of eternity. This church where we worship is essential for that purpose, a place to meet together, to love each other, and to encourage each other. But it is only the love and the faith and the good that we do for others, even if it is invisible to most people, that God says is eternal. And when the day comes, this is how we will be judged, not by being perfect, but by being human beings who know they're not perfect, but who are willing to be saved and forgiven by God and to be used for good to the glory of God. As in a great book or film, we as human beings, through faith, have a small but essential part in building the kingdom of God. Perhaps a very few of us will be stars, but most of us will take the character parts and the supporting roles and the extras, finding our way around as best we can to build a life that is good for us and for others. And when generations come, look back on us. They will not only say, look at this beautiful building. We hope they say that too. But more importantly, they will say, see how they loved one another. Please stand as we say together the Nicene Creed, found in your bulletin on page 4, and in the Book of Common Prayer on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God,
And now, kneeling or standing as you are able, let us pray. Generous God, giver of all good gifts, we pray in thanksgiving for the gift of life, remembering especially those in our parish family celebrating their birthdays, including the Reverend Charles Lochner, Natalia Aliaya, and Dirk Watson. We also give thanks for the people and clergy of St. Paul's, Morris Plains, St. Peter's, Morristown, Church of Redeemer, Morristown, and the Anglican Church of Australia. And of our companion congregation of Santa Maria Margarita in Cologne, Panama, and of our companion diocese of Panama. We offer our gratitude for other blessings that we may now, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Healing God, we pray for all those on our parish prayer list, especially Ricardo Gill, Chris Nicholas, Jennifer Costin, Dean, Richard Andrelia, Emmett O'Malley Fisher, Dan Casinger, Levon Saters, Rose Castell, Randy Vocal, Maureen, Denise, sorry, Dennis Allen, Pauline Henry, Mary Jaxel, William Blackwood, and for all who are grieving, lonely, or hurting this day. We also pray to you, God, for all others on our healing prayer list and those who name now, either silently or aloud. Lord of love, we also pray for the people of Northern Ethiopia who are experiencing famine and war, thinking especially of malnourished children, and also for the refugees on the poland belarus border, and people on both sides, that in all these situations there may be compassion, justice, and peace. Eternal God, we pray for those who have died, especially Ruth Buck, Carson Cole, Bruce Morrissey, Richard Kennett, Jemima, and Glenn Zobel. We also remember the saints in whose memory the altar flowers are given to your glory. Herman of Alaska, Margaret of Scotland, Hugh of Lincoln, Hilda of Whitby, Elizabeth of Hungary, and King Edmund. And for all the departed, including those who may now either allow or silently in our hearts. Spirit, you bid us worship your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by the witness of your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable to the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Yeah. My sister. 
sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please safely share a sign of God's peace.
I think that we don't need to applaud, but to applaud. <laughs> sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your 
people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you and unending life. Amen. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the land is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah.
together. It's at the bottom of page five of your bulletin or on page three. Page eight of your bulletin uh, or on page 366. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, to the honor and the glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. We close our service this morning by singing hymn 598, O Christ, when first thou camest to earth.
go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And thanks be to you. Thank <laughs> you.